Hey guys, Streaming Iraq War Veteran here with an honest review of the Dell XPS Special Edition Tower, also known as the XPS 8930. Now, the only thing that makes this special is this front faux metal cover. It's plastic, but they say it's like a metal. It's not. Um, this has the i7 in it. Um, on the front here, power button, SD card slot, headphone, microphone, USB C, 3.1s, and a DVD drive. Not too much on the side. The only extra fan comes out here, up through the top. This is the side door to get inside of it. And the back here, your back I.O. This is to release the side panel, this lock. And that one is to release this to open it up. The power supply. Um, you got up top here two USB 3s, I think. No, twos, I think they are. But, anyways, Ethernet. You got Display Port, HDMI, USB C. Um, and those are. Um, USB 3s, and then you got your audio shit here. This is my GTX 1080. I'm guessing here that this one is a 10 gigabit, because it's the USB-C, because it has a little 10 over it. I don't know if you can see that, but anyway. Anyways, these are not hard to open. You just pull this. No matter what some people say on the internet, just pull this. Panel opens. It's not rocket science. So, let's not pretend like it is other, other people that have these. These fins up top... I just noticed this, but if you look at it, very bendable, so be careful, you might break them. Alright, getting into the system. My system has the 89, 89, yeah, the i7-8700 in it. Um, it has a GTX 1080, just taking this off real quick, so bear with me. Because without with this on, you can't really. Actually, you know what? I don't need to take off the bottom one. It does nothing else. It doesn't stop anything. All right, and you can leave the bottom one in. Top screw is the one that really needs to come out. But when you want to move this out, unlock that one by moving it up, and move this one up. Then you can pull it out. Sounds horrible every time I open it. Um, that there is the GTX 1080. Down there below where you see that little UPS symbol or whatever it is. Not UPS, but anyways. Um, QR code actually what it is. Sorry about that. That's my 256 M.2 MVME PCI Express 4X or whatever SSD. From Samsung. It's a good one. It's a P981, I believe it is. I got 16 gigs of DDR4 running at 2666, and those are from Hijinx. They're not bad. Uh, GTX 1080, 1.8 pin power. Pretty good card. These did not come in here. I'm just putting them in here to see how it would be for future upgrading when I want to put other hard drives in here, which I will be doing. These are just two 500s I'm going to mess with. It's a little bit of a pain in the ass trying to route these cables. If you want to put extra hard drives in here, get the right angled ones. These will be much better because that door is so freaking close to these. Um, as you can see with this one, I just stuck it in that little clip. Helps hold this cable so it doesn't get fucked up by that. And it's not near the fan down there, so we're okay. That seems to be alright, I guess. Um, yeah, it should be. Not looking like it's going to be touching the fan, but it's kind of iffy. I don't like that so much. Alright, um... The power is off of one thing. I don't like that so much. But, negatives about this system. That cooler is a junk cooler. It's a stock Intel one. Any of these 8700Ks are the same... <clears throat> or the same generation of chips are hotter chips because they're not soldered. The heat spreader on them is not 
soldered. The IHS is not soldered. It is just has paste on it and then it's glued down. They used to solder it. When they solder stuff, it actually cools better. The paste in between does not work as well. So this is a hot chip. This cooler is super inefficient for this. One stress test I did and it got to 91C. That's very bad. Even if you get a K chip in here, it's going to run hot. And you can't overclock very well with this motherboard. I'll tell you why. Major reason. CPU cooler. Inefficient. Evidence number two. It's only a 4 plus 2 f power phase, or 6, however you want to consider it. Power phases are determined by these big, bigger squares. As you can see, it's a 4 and a 2. Now, overclocking motherboards are usually 10 and 2, or 10 and 4. So this does not have the, requi the required power requirements to be able to overclock very well. So don't think you can, even if you do get a K chip. It's not going to do it very well. The only fan is there. You cannot put an all-in-one liquid cooler in here. Because they had to fabricate a uh, adapter to be able to even put that fan in there. So it's not going to happen. There's no room above it because there's no opening. And no screw holes. Uh, what else? Um, the GTX 1080 is a good card, especially even a Founders Edition like this, basically. But it's loud, being a blower style. All cards that are Founders Edition are blower styles, and they're going to be loud. Now, good things about this system, it is very hot. Well, fast, excuse me, not hot. It's a very fast system, having the i7-8700 in it. An i7 is 6 cores, 12 threads. It is a very nice chip. A lot of people are saying it's one of the top ones right now for gaming. Because it can go up to like 4.7 very easily with its normal turbo boost. Now, being this is a Founders Edition, the max I've seen under, under load when it's not having issues of thermal throttling, like a lot of Founders Edition cards do, was 1911 I believe. A lot of aftermarket cards with aftermarket coolers have higher clocks because they can cool better. They have more than one little piss-ass blower fan. But it's generally a good card. I'm not sure if the system is really worth $1,800, but you pay for what you get. Now, on that being said, though, it was worth for me to get the 1080. Because um, it originally came with a 1050 Ti. I didn't want that. And at the time that I got this, the upgrade for the 1080 was only $250. There's nowhere in any marketplace that normally you're going to be able to get a 1080 graphics card for that low a price. So it, w it was a good deal for me. I really wanted a 1080 because I like to gr game. I'll be doing more gaming. I've been streaming on this. I've been doing videos from it. And I think it's a very nice system overall. If you have any comments or questions down below, definitely let me know. I'll answer as, as much as I can. And one more quick thing. Yes, you can buy an upgraded CPU cooler for this from Dell. And it actually works very well. It cools 20 degrees C cooler than the, than the CPU from what I've seen other people doing. I'm going to buy it and I will be doing a video on it. And I will put the part numbers in the description below. Or in the comments, actually, of the Dell Upgrade CPU cooler for this. It's worth the money, no matter what it costs. I'm sure it's not going to be super expensive, but I'm sure it's not going to be that cheap either. I will definitely let you guys know. And as always, guys, I'm the Streaming Rack War Veteran. If you like this video, definitely hit a thumbs up. Write any comments down below. I'll respond to any that I can. And as always, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Have a good one.